Good morning, everyone. Good morning and welcome to Pray First. Today is Friday. It's actually Good Friday 2022. So how is everyone doing out there? Remember, Pray First is a conversation that we have Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. I'm watching to see if um, people are coming in and I see no... Ah, oh, there we go. Sometimes with Facebook, you just don't know what's going on behind the scenes. So I'm glad people are coming on in. Good morning, Ed Rose. How are you doing this morning? I saw that you were able to fill out the RSVP for the buffet. Good morning, Brenda Smith. How are you doing? Hey, Neil Hedges. So come on in here. Remember, pray first again. Conversation that we have Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. It's where we remember that we first, we first give God first. So we come on in here, we read scriptures together, we talk about Him together, learning more about Him, learning more about each other. And um, it's fantastic. It's fantastic. Something I look forward to. So good morning, Brandy. Good morning, Nita Kay. Congratulations, Nita Kay, on your new job. Good morning, Kelly Saldo. Make sure you're hitting the hearts and likes. I see them going up on the side. Hashtagging live. Thank, thank you, Kareen. You helped me remember everything I'm supposed to do. Or hashtag and recorded. Um, make sure you're saying hi to each other. Um, enjoying each other as much as I enjoy you. So um, before I go into what I want to say this morning. Good morning, Michelle. I just wanted to pause and say thank you. Thank you to everyone um, who reached out to me in this last week. Thank you for Dennis for covering for me last Friday. Um, my stepfather died last weekend and um, it's been a little bit of a trying time around the, the Starker household. Um, I think mainly because um, he was not a believer. And when you're around someone who does not believe and they're dying, whoosh, it's a very, very um, depressing thing. I think that it's, it's depressing. It's depressing because you see him scared and there's things that you just simply cannot fix. So thank you all my friends um, who um, reached out, checked on me and um, made sure everything was okay. So let's see. Good Friday. So this morning I woke up and I am going to, I am going to be diving into first Kings because I love the Bible project. And again, I've said this a gazillion times on pray first, how much I love the old Testament. But I think that it would be a miss if I did not take a moment just so that we could talk about Good Friday. Because, you know, I, maybe it's perhaps my stepfather was 95. And so I'm thinking back to all that he lived through. And that just, my mind was spinning this morning. So, you know, we call it Good Friday. But can you imagine back then his disciples, there was nothing about that day that was good. They probably thought it was the most frightening time of their lives. Actually, they knew it. That's why many of them hid. They were denying that Christ was alive because that they, that they followed Christ, excuse me, because they knew that persecution would happen if they knew that people were associated with him. And so, but we never know. And that's what I was reflecting on is like now, now, here, now, we know that it's Good Friday because we know that had he not died, there would not have been a resurrection. If there's not to be a resurrection, we would not have everything that we have now because of the Holy Spirit that resides in us. And you just, I, I, that is that is the biggest, that is the most important moment in, in history in our that we can focus on. But there's so many little things as well that if we had that perspective, I know I'm going to be all over the place this morning, by the way. But anyways. Because um, I was thinking, like, something else my daughter said this um, this week to me. Um, my, my mother was um, born, be, born and lived through the Korean War. And so my youngest said, wow, Mom, had it not been the Korean War, I would not be alive today. So all the tragedy that, her, uh, that, um, that happened during the Korean War made it so that my father went to Korea to actually be, you know, to serve as an MP and by meeting my mom, I mean, he never would have gone there. No, not, Americans would not have gone there. And that's, you know, that sets a chain in action. <clears throat> so as even as we're looking at Christ's life, all the details that lined up for Christ to be the, the, the son of God, for him to fulfill all the prophecies in the Old Testament, every little thing had to happen for that to have to happen. Because there's so many times that, you know, when I read through the scriptures, I think to myself, I can't imagine, you know, you get that, 
do, do any of you have that self-righteous feelings that were like, I wouldn't have been that. I wouldn't have done that because you would have thought that I saw his miracles. I saw this. I was with him. There's no way I would have scattered. Thank you, Brandy, for using that word. There's no way I would have scattered had they killed my best friend. I would have been there for him, but they weren't because pesky human emotions can really get in the way and fear is a real thing. So in the midst of all the chaos that sometimes is your life, remember we don't get to see a hundred years in the future. We only get to see the here and now. So we don't know what details are being set now that are imperative for something to happen in the future. And only God knows that. And, um, and I think that's important for us to know that as we sit here and we know that because we have a resurrected king, because he is a resurrected king, that we are able to have that knowledge that he is good and he is in control. And if you can rest in that and know that he is good, he is a good God, no matter what our circumstances look like, think about that Good Friday. There is no way the disciples thought that, well, the, how much must, must they have doubted that God was a good God? Because they just saw the man that they put all that the man that they put all their faith into the one that thought they were going to rescue them from the government in their current situation that from their current eyes i thought okay he is gonna he is gonna rescue us from our current situation he's gonna change our lives now but they didn't realize that the plan was to change their lives forever and had it not been for christ and had not been for us to receive the holy spirit we would also be trapped in the here and now, but we have eternity to look forward to. Eternity, if we keep our minds on that eternity and we know and we know, no, you know, not just him as savior, but we know him as Lord, our lives will look different. We will act different and people will be drawn to that. I think people were drawn to Peter. People were drawn to them because after they experienced the resurrected king, they were completely different people. They were fearful when they were in Christ. And it, they changed after they had the Holy Spirit. So friends, if you believe in the resurrected Christ and you trust him as Lord, then your life should be different and your lives will be different because you're going to embrace that power of the Holy Spirit inside of you and he's going to cause you to act differently and that will draw people unto you because it's the goodness of God that draws people to them. It's not fear. Fear doesn't come from God. So those who try and scare people to go to hell, it never works. It might be a split section, section to t um, decision, but I don't believe it's a decision made in the heart or in the spirit. You've got to woo them with his love. And by wooing him with his love, it just changes everything. And it gives you the peace that surpasses all understanding. It gives you strength that you didn't even know because it's not yours. And so many ask me how I'm doing it. It's because it's him. He gives me the strength. He gives me the peace. Now I do have pesky human emotions and I am in a physical body. So whoosh, I send out lots of May days. If I go, my goodness, pray for me because I am worn. I was worn to the core. But peace, strength, always have it because he's in me. Okay, so that's my little tirade on that. But because I was also talking about in just that moment, um, we don't know what's going to happen 100 years from now. So what we think we know, nothing. And think about all the people who are 100 years before us, you know. So um, one of the cool things we're doing at Cross Point this weekend. So if you happen to be in-house celebrating Easter with us, you get to be a part of something so incredible. We're going to do time capsules for everyone that comes in so that... Um, so that the future can see what we were here, here now, and realize that we may have been suffering, we may have been in the midst of something incredible, but, but, we just can't see, but we do know, without a doubt, that our God is an incredibly good God. Good morning, Barbie Shook. Good morning, Karen. Hey, Mel, how are you doing? Um, I, I know, I gotta, whoa! If I don't knock you guys over, I told you. The sleep deprivation is a real thing, my friends. It's a real thing. All right, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to um, read in 1 Kings. But before I do, I had a crazy question. How many of you guys have read, I'm read. How many of you guys have watched 
movies about the res uh, about Easter. We got in this conversation yesterday at lunch, and I was amazed at how much I had not seen. Like, don't laugh. I had no idea that Ben Hur was about Easter. I had uh, now. Remember when that Passion of the Christ came out? This was years ago. I couldn't see it. I couldn't see it. It was too scary for me because I don't like to see people suffer, even if it is my king. Like, I know what he suffered for me, so I don't see it, but I, um, but I know so many do. And then I know, so anyways, if there are movies out there that you have watched in regards to um, Easter or Good Friday, I'd love to know which, one, which one's your favorite because um, I think that'd be good for us to go back and watch if, um, if we are so inclined. Anyways, that was my random thought because Doug was name, um, naming um, some movies off yesterday. I go, yeah, I, I, I didn't see that. Yeah, I didn't see that. And uh, then I was like, wow, have I seen any of them? I think he said another one. Mm, I can't remember what it was, but anyways, that was random. Let's get started on 1 Kings, all right? Let's at least get me a chapter into 1 Kings before I let you guys out of here. That way when Pastor Brandy um, picks back up. All right, here we go. 1 Kings. Ooh, The Chosen. Yes, Brandy, that's the one I was on the tip of my tongue that I can't remember, trying to remember. All right, King David grew old. The years had caught up with him. Even though they piled blankets on him, he couldn't keep warm. So his servant said to him, we're going to get a young virgin for our master, the king, to be at his side and look after him. She'll get in bed with you and arouse our master, the king. So they searched the country of Israel for the most ravishing girl they, sh they could find. They found Abishag, the Shumanite, and brought her to the king. The girl was stunningly beautiful. She stayed at his side and looked after the king, but the king did not have sex with her. At this time, Adonijah, whose mother was Haggith, puffed herself puffed himself up, saying, I'm the next king. He made quite a splash with chariots and riders and fifty men to run ahead of him. His father had spoiled him rotten as a king, never once reprimanding him. Besides that, he was very good looking and the next in line after Absalom. Adonijah I talked with Joab son of Zeriah and with Abathar the priest, and they threw their weight on his side. But neither the priest Zadok, nor Benaniah son of Jehoiada, nor Nathan the prophet, nor Shimei the Ray, nor David's personal bodyguards supported Adonijah. Next, Adonijah held a coronation feast, sacrificing sheep, cattle, and grain-fed heifers at the stone of Zoholeth near the Robel Springs. He invited all his brothers, the king's son, and everyone in Judah who had position and influence, but he did not invite the prophet Nathan, Benaniah, the bodyguards, or his brother Solomon. Nathan went to Bathsheba, Solomon's mother. Did you know that Adonijah, Haggith's son, has taken over as king and our master David doesn't know a thing about it? Quickly now, let me tell you how you can save both your own life and Solomon's. Go immediately to King David and speak up. Didn't you, my master the king, promise me your son Solomon will be king after me instead of my throne? So why is Adonijah now king? While you're there talking with the king, I'll come in and corroborate your story. So Bathsheba went at once to the king in the palace bedroom. He was so old. Abishag was at his side, making him comfortable. As Bathsheba bowed, bowed low, honoring the king, he said, What do you want? My master, she said, you promised me in God's name your son Solomon will be king after me and sit on my throne. And now look what's happened. Adonijah has taken over as king, and my master the king doesn't even know it. He has thrown a huge coronation feast, cattle and grain-fed heifers and sheep, inviting all the king's sons, the priest Abiathar and Joab, head of the army. But your servant Solomon was not invited. My master the king, every eye in Israel is watching you to see what you'll do to see who will sit on the throne of my master the king after him. If you fail to act the moment you're buried, my son Solomon and I are as good as dead. Abruptly, while she was telling the king all this, Nathan the prophet came in and was announced. Nathan the prophet is here. He came before the king, honoring him by bowing deeply, his face touching the ground. My master the king, Nathan began, did you say Adonijah shall be king after me and sit in my throne? Because that's what's happening. He's thrown a huge coronation feast, cattle, grain-fed heifers, sheep, inviting all the king's sons, the army officers, and Abiathar the priest. They're having a grand time, eating and drinking and shouting, long live king Adonijah. But I wasn't invited, nor was the priest Zadok, nor Benaniah, son of Joadiah, nor your servant Solomon. Is this something that my master the king has done behind our backs, not telling your servants who you intended to be king after you? King David took action. Get Bathsheba back in here. She entered and stood before the king. 
The king solemnly promised, As God lives, the God who delivered me from every kind of trouble, I'll do exactly what I promised in God's name, the God of Israel. Your son Solomon will be king after me and take my place on this throne, and I'll make sure it happens this very day. Bathsheba bowed, her face to the ground, kneeling in reverence before the king. She said, Oh, may my, ma oh, may my master, King David, live forever. King David said, Call Zadok the priest, Nathan the prophet, and Benaniah son of Jehoiada. They came to the king. Then he ordered, Gather my servants, then mount my son Solomon on my royal mule, and lead him in procession down to Gibbon. When you get there, Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet will anoint him king over Israel. Then blow the ram's horn trumpet and shout, Long live King Solomon! You will then accompany him as he enters and takes his place on my throne, succeeding me as king. I have named him ruler over Israel and Judah. Benaniah, son of Jehoiada, backed the king. Yes, and may God, the God of my master, the king, confirm it. Just as God has been with my master, the king, may he also be with Solomon and make his rule even greater than that of my master, King David. Then Zadok the priest, Nathan the prophet, Benaniah, son of Jehoiada, and the king's personal bodyguards, the Carathites and Pelathites, went down, mounted Solomon on King David's mule, and prayed, in, <clears throat> prayed with him to Gihon. Zadok the priest brought a flask of oil from the sanctuary and anointed Solomon. They blew the ram's horn trumpet and everyone shouted, Long live King Solomon. Everyone joined the fanfare, the band playing, the people singing, and very, the very earth reverberated to the sound. Adonijah and his retinue of guests were just finishing their, cor their coronation feast when they heard it. When Joab heard the blast of ram's horn trumpet, he said, What's going on here? What's all this uproar? Suddenly, in the midst of the questioning, Jonathan, son of Abiathar the priest, showed up. And Anijah said, Welcome, a brave and good man like you must have good news. But Jonathan answered, Hardly. Our master, King Solomon, has just made Solomon king. And the king has surrounded him with Zadok the priest, Nathan the prophet, Benaniah, son of Joadiah, with the Kerathites and the Pelathites, and they've mounted Solomon on the royal mule. Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet have anointed him king at Gihon, and the parade is headed up this way, singing a great fanfare. The city is beside itself. That's what you're hearing. Here's the crowning touch. Solomon is seated on the throne of the kingdom, and that's not all. The king's servants have come to give their blessing to our master King David, saying, God, make Solomon's name even more honor than yours, and make his rule greater than yours. On his deathbed, the king worshipped God and prayed, Blessed to God, Israel's God, who had provided a successor to my throne, and I've lived to see it. Panicked, Adonijah's guests got out of there, scattering every which way. But Adonijah himself, afraid for his life because of Solomon, fled to the sanctuary and grabbed the horns of the altar. Solomon is told, Adonijah, fearful King Solomon, has taken sanctuary and seized the horns of the altar and is saying, I'm not leaving until King Solomon promises that he won't kill me. Solomon then said, If he proves to be a man of honor, not a hair of his head will be hurt. But if there's evil in him, he'll die. Solomon summoned him, and they brought him from the altar. Adonijah came and bowed down, honoring the king. Solomon dismissed him, saying, Go home. All right, friends, that I'm going to go ahead and stop there at the end of 1 Kings um, chapter 1. So, this is going to be a great weekend at Cross Point Church. Uh, but even before Sunday, Easter Sunday, remember, we have the ladies' event at Cross Point, and that's for anybody in the northern Mississippi area. Come on in. It's just an hour and a half from 9 to 1030 where you're going to have an opportunity to mingle with other ladies and just have fellowship and fun and hear a great speaker. So um, I'm going to go ahead and pray us out of here, my friends, and we shall um, see you again soon. So Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for all these incredible people that came online with me today. Lord, thank you for their hearts. Thank you for them. Um, just their families, Lord. I just want to ask you to bless them. Keep them safe, Lord. No spirit but your Holy Spirit. Have your way with them. Lord, bring them in um, safely again next week. Lord, for those of them that are going to go in-house on Easter, help them to do so. Help them to find a place, Lord, where they can go in and fellowship with other believers on Easter. We love you, Lord, so much, and we just thank you, Lord, for being our God. Thank you for it being Good Friday, Lord, that we can see the goodness in this Friday. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, friends. So, can't believe it's already Easter 2022. Last Easter at Crosswind was so incredible. It was our go out Easter, so we were able to bless so many in our community because we made meals for them. This Easter is a come in Easter. I promise you, you are not going to regret it. Actually, we're having two services, 9 and 11, because we know how many people are going to come and ingest 
refresh. Okay. So have a great Friday, my friends. I will talk to you. See you next week. All right. Bye.